Welcome to part 3 in this series on how to create your first app in ArcGIS App Studio. Make sure you've watched part 1 and part 2 of this series before starting this video. In part 3, we'll learn more about adding image components to our app, editing them, and putting other finishing touches. Next, we're going to add an image to the bottom of this text that we just created. So what I'm going to do is go back inside this rectangle, add an image component, and let's see what properties we have available for image. Documentation for Qt, check the image type, and we see here that source is a property. We can set the URL value to the source property. So back in Qt Creator, we're going to set a source property to a string. But wait, we don't have an image to set yet. So what I'm going to do is I go into the directory of the app. So how we access the directory of the app is we go to the user folder. If you're in Windows, this is how you access this directory. Go into the user folder, ArcGIS App Studio Apps, and inside it, you'll see the name of the app listed. In this case, it's the ID of the app. Go in here, go into Assets. This is where we store all images. I'm going to copy an image that I have downloaded previously. Call it cat jpeg. And inside the source property, we're going to reference that cat jpeg file we just created. So I'm going to say dot slash. Inside the assets folder, you see Qt Creator automatically suggests file and directory names for you, which is very convenient slash and cats right there. And we will likely anchor the text to the appropriate places. We'll also need to do the same for image. So I'm going to say anchors top, but then we don't have an ID for text that we can refer to. So I'm going to say ID of subtext for the text component we created earlier. And I'm going to say the image, the top of the image should be anchored to the bottom of subtext. Little space, little margin there of 10 pixels, and also horizontal center. Set that to the uh, parent's horizontal center. So run that, see how that looks. Okay, it doesn't look too great, but it's still appearing at the right place and position where I want it to. I think for Grumpy Cat to look like Grumpy Cat, we'll have to assign this much higher width here. I'm going to say, 400. And also, let's assign image a property that will crop it if it's necessary to do so. So I think that property is called fill mode here. It says, uh, set this property to define what happens when the source image has a different size than the item. So we'll say fill mode image.preserve aspect crop. So it will crop anything that is outside of the boundaries. Run that. Okay, looks much better. We have now added an image component and a text component, um, and we have made some other changes to the app as well. So it's looking pretty different than what we started with. What I would like to do now is I notice that if I click between the tabs here, the home and the contact us text changes, but the image doesn't change and the text above the image doesn't change either. So we're going to change that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add two properties at the top here. Property for subtext content. And another one called property bar image source. So we can control these variables from the main app component when we navigate between the tabs here. So now that we've defined those properties inside template page, Let's go into my app, go to where template page is being called, and just like desk text as a property, let's add subtext content as a property. And you'll see that once I start typing in subtext, Qt Creator auto completes the uh, name of the property for you. And I'm going to add in some sample text here. Actually, just copy that text from template page in here, and also add an image source property and give it the uh, same value we gave source here. And that should be it for our first tab, which is home. 
But since we're doing this in template page inside my app here, we're setting these values for text and image inside my app. We don't need to do that again in, in here in the template page. So what we're going to do is assign source property inside image, a value of uh, image source, and assign text property for subtext, a value of uh, subtext content so that it can dynamically retrieve whatever is the value of those variables depending on the button we click on. Similarly, let's copy this over here to the second page, assign a different text here to subtext content property, I'm going to assign it slightly different looking lower mips and text. And for our new image, I'm going to add a new image to our assets directory of a different cat, call it Cat2 and change the name as appropriate in the image source property. Run that, see where that takes us. And you see here that once the app renders, we have text and image for each tab that changes when I click on the bottom nav bar. So that's great, that's exactly what we wanted. But let's style this a little further because it's not looking perfect yet. For instance, we would like this text here in the second tab to wrap itself around a bit better around its parent because it's being cut off for smaller app sizes. So you see here that if the width is small for the app, the text doesn't really show up. So what we're going to do is go into template page, go back into our text component, add a property called wrap mode. And we're going to assign it a value of text.wrap. And this should neatly wrap the text around the width of the parent. We also have to assign text a width property of parent.width so that the wrapping works around whatever the width of the parent is. So I'm going to run that, see if that works better. And we see here that the text is being wrapped as we expected. Great. So next step. Let's move all these components to the top because there's a lot of empty space at the top that's not being used and uh, everything's moving to the bottom. So let's just move everything to the top. So I'm going to go into the label component inside a rectangle since that is the topmost component inside of the center component here. And instead of assigning this parent value, I'm going to assign anchors top parent dot top. Top margin, give it 25 pixels, and also a horizontal center to be parent dot horizontal. And let's run that. And once the app renders, we'll see that the app is looking exactly like we want it to. The text components and the image components are all centered. There's no weird blank space at the top. It's more appropriate to have that at the bottom. And the text and the images change or is updated dynamically based on which button at the bottom is being clicked. So we have successfully created an app here that does not much, just shows pictures of cats and some incoherent text in Latin, but you should be at a good place to start creating your own apps in App Studio using Qt and QML. Thanks for finishing this series on creating your first app with ArcGIS App Studio. Hopefully you found this three-part video series informative and enjoyable. If you have suggestions on other topics to cover or requests for tutorials, please leave them in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GeoMarvel's other tutorials in our channel.